Well, South African President Jacob Zuma has congratulated President-elect Uhuru Kenyatta on winning Kenya's state house. I really would like to congratulate, firstly, the people of Kenya uh, who have gone into the polls and voted. And as you said, in democracy, <clears throat> the majority uh, wins the day. And the fact that they voted and they've decided to choose their leader, and he has been declared a winner, would like to congratulate him as well for winning elections. You know that in the last elections, <clears throat> uh, the, 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 the conclusion was rather a little bit problematic, although uh, the elections were there. We are happy today that the, the, the announcement has been made and people of Kenya are accepting this. And I think in democracy, uh, as you know, there is always contestation. And those who win, <clears throat> and, and the final results must be accepted by everyone. And that's what we think Africa is maturing about in terms of democracy, that once the results are there, <clears throat> you are able to live with it. So we'd like to congratulate uh, <clears throat> the new president and really say well done and say well done to the people of Kenya. President Zuma also says Kenyatta's uh, trial at the International Criminal Court will not affect relations between South Africa and Kenya. Well, for more post-election discussion, I'm joined in the studio by Joseph Wambia, CEO of Wambia Capital, an investment firm that focuses on Africa. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for having me. Now, first, uh, give me your assessment of this final pronouncement of uh, Uru Kenyatta's president-elect. Well, first of all, I'd like to join everybody in congratulating my fellow countrymen, the people of Kenya, for conducting themselves wonderfully well in the elections and for having peaceful elections and waiting in the lines. So that makes me very proud as a Kenyan. Yeah. And, and, and now uh, everybody, uh, as, you know, some are celebrating, but there's also someone looking at uh, uh, the other side of the story. Those who lost have issues with the IBC. What is your assessment of the performance of the electoral body? Well, I, I am not one of those who have been uh, giving uh, gratuitous uh, congratulations and comments and, and uh, um, praise to the IBC because I think they failed monumentally. I think it was either an act of gross incompetence on their part or willful malfeasance. Mm -hmm. You cannot assure that nation that you are ready and prepared to conduct elections with the electronic BVR systems and all the fail safety uh, measurements that were put in there yeah. and then fail in every single count, including having a situation where yeah. uh, the computer is counting um, a certain candidate called spoiled vote eight times so that the spoiled vote coalition became a third runner. And <laughs> during the manual count, all of a sudden it disappeared. But they did acknowledge uh, that the electronic system failed and uh, machines do fail. They said, well, we resort to the manual because the manual has uh, the evidence there, the certificates are signed onto by agents and, and, and returning officers. So you can verify those. Well, this was the equivalent of sending the space shuttle to the, to, into space for us. An election, uh, conducting a general election properly, without fail, uh, is a key pillar of our democratic process and particularly for, for national security. Uh, failure was not an option and they failed. And those are excuses. But, okay, where, what level of failure here? The country elected governors, senators, members of parliament, so many of uh, those who lost at those other levels have actually conceded and congratulated uh, their victors. Now, is it, did it fail totally or did it just fail in the presidential count? It failed in the only count that mattered, which is a presidential count. And it failed in every count that mattered at the presidential count. So they were a total failure. Look, these are the same people who said they could not organize elections in the diaspora, the simplest places of all where people can simply march to the embassy, vote, and go home. Okay? And so um, I think they are incompetent. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the the law now uh, has to take uh, its course. Uh, the court coalition has said it's going to go to the Supreme Court yeah. uh, next Monday. Right. Do you feel and have that confidence that actually the Supreme Court finally will yeah. give the verdict that will be satisfactory to the Kenyan voters? Like every Kenyan, I have every confidence in the integrity, objectivity, and independence of our currently constituted Supreme Court. 
And I would urge all my country, fellow Kenyans and the whole world for that matter to accept the verdict of the Supreme Court. I hope that those who are mouthing that they support the Supreme Court will also support the decision if it goes against them, meaning whether with the court uh, team, if they lose, uh, they will accept. And equally importantly, if those, the Jubilee and those who are currently praising the Supreme Court, I would like to hear what they say and how they conduct themselves after the Supreme Court yes. rules against them. But what I'd like to point out, Vincent, is that all this would be totally unnecessary if the Independent Electoral Commission had done its job. And the media itself has had a lot to blame, particularly the Kenyan domestic media. Mm -hmm. They were cheering on instead of, if, if they had uh, taken, been, been a little bit tougher with the IBC, uh, first, the IBC was clearly unprepared. They didn't do the dry run. The media did not point that out. B, there were clear maps on, in, in the, on the internet showing registration in many places over 100 percent. The yeah. media didn't point that out. So I think the media is, is uh, uh, the Kenyan media, the domestic media, yeah. is very, has bears a significant responsibility for not sharpening and putting the IBC on toes yeah. early enough. Yeah, but also and also the, for praising also, them falsely. Yeah, but also the candidates or candidates uh, knew the weaknesses that are uh, <laughs> were, were in the way of IBC, yeah. uh, but they didn't point them out before they went to the election, including the court alliance. They, they expected some problems, didn't they? No, I think, you know, when you are a contestant, both Jubilee and the court alliance are contestants. And, uh, you know, they have other business to do, which is to win the election, you know, mop up their, their supporters and do whatever they're doing. And also, um, you don't want to undermine the, the uh, confidence in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the referee. You, you want to praise the referee, which they did correctly, saying they have confidence in the referee. The referee says he's ready. The referee is going to do a good job. And then the, the referee fails mm -hmm. 100 <laughs> percent. Well... I think the comforting thing is that the country is intact, it's peaceful, and the court well, will give but us I think a, we are very, a final decision. We're very fortunate in that yeah, regard. Exactly. Yes. You know, I want to thank you very much, Joe, uh, for joining us today. For thank you insights. very, very much. Uh, Joseph Wambier uh, is a CEO of the investment firm Wambier Capital.